Hey, we're on to book number 17, and I promised I was going in a different direction, I did. I went more into almost a science-based book on talents. So it's called The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, and it talks about the myelin in our brains, and I'll be honest, it was really scientific for my brain, because it's not how I think. But it had some really good examples of how the myelin in our body works, and in our brains, and the coding of it. And how that is what makes people that talented. So those singers that just become phenomenal. He uses an example of a little town in Texas that produces some of the greatest singers in the world. And what the skills are that it takes to get there and what it is. And so I'm sitting here playing Lego today while we film. Because I am going to become a master Lego builder. Or not. But this is something that I do a lot of in my day. And someone commented to me the other day about how good I am at it. And I laughed because it's because I play it a lot. And I build a lot. And what if we all did that with everything in our lives? What if we took something that we were really passionate about and actually spent the time? They say that when you do something for 10,000 or more hours, you become a master at that skill. So what have we done in our days other than look at Facebook and watch TV? or play video games that we've actually done for 10,000 hours. We quit, right? We give up. We try something for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, even a couple of years, but we might give it a few hours a week and then we can't figure out why we're not better at it. So my challenge to everybody today is what is your thing? What is your thing that you want to do for 10,000 hours so that you master it? I can build Lego without really looking. There's, there's my skill of the day. But he gives a really cool example and I just want to read it to you. Page 81, and it's talking about the three rules of deep practice, because that's a big part of this, is you need deep practice, which is the part none of us want to do, right? Other than Lego building. But writes about another example is Ray Lamontagne. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, sorry. I'm not French. A shoe factory worker from Lewiston, Maine, who at age 22 had an epiphany that he should become a singer-songwriter. He had little musical experience and less money, so he took a simple approach to learning. He bought dozens of used albums by Stephen Stills, Otis Redding, Al Green, Etta James, and Ray Charles, and holed up in his apartment for two years. Every day, he spent hours training himself by singing along to the records. His friends assumed he had left town. His neighbors assumed he was either insane or had locked himself inside a musical time capsule, which in a sense he had. I would sing and sing and hurt and hurt because I knew I wasn't doing it right, he said. It took a long time, but I finally learned to sing from the gut. Eight years after he started, his first album sold nearly half a million copies. The main reason was his soulful voice, which Rolling Stone said sounded like church, and at which other listeners mistook and which other listeners sorry mistook for that of Otis Redding and Al Green. His voice was a gift, it was a greed. But the real gift, perhaps, was the precise, was the practice strategy he used to build that voice. So practicing, right? He talks about break it down into chunks, then slow it down. So one thing he writes is, it's not how fast you can do it. It's how slow you can do it correctly. Second, going slow helps the practicer to develop something even more important, a working perception of the skill's internal blueprints the shape and rhythm of the interlocking skill circuits. And then rule two is repeat it. Just keep doing it over and over and over and over. And then three, learn to feel it. And so I, this was an interesting book. It wasn't my favorite just because it was very, very science-based and like brain chemistry and that sort of thing. But for anyone who's really curious about how to make something in your life bigger, how to make a skill bigger or greater or learn at a faster pace. This is a really interesting book. So this is one I'll probably come back to at some point and really break down some of the things in my life I'd like to change. But let me tell you, I'm a damn good Lego player probably because I do it so often. So check back soon, going in another direction again, kind of backtracking a bit. So can't wait to tell you what I'm reading next.